Thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, my name is Bella Naiman. Um, I'm the co-founder of New York City Jewelry Week. Uh, New York City Jewelry Week is dedicated to promoting and celebrating the world of jewelry through educational and innovative focused programming, like the one that we have here for you tonight. This is sadly our last jewelry confidence for the season, but you can find live content from New York City Jewelry Week on our Instagram page over the summer. And if you're interested in participating in New York City Jewelry Week this November, registration is now open for our community program. So I hope you'll visit our website. We're so excited for this special evening edition of Jewelry Confidants titled The Making of It with contemporary art jeweler Samuel Gillian and Sayumi Yakuchi, who's joining us from Japan. So it's actually morning. Um, so good morning to you, Sayumi. Um, oh just <laughs> Um, so just a little bit of a brief intro. Um, Samuel Gillian is a jewelry maker and a designer trained under the mentorship of Ursi Galetti from Carcass, Susan Sloan, and Klaus Burgel at the 92nd Street Y in New York. He's currently living and working in New York, and he conceives, designs, and materially produces all of his pieces in limited editions. Sayumi Yakuchi is a studio artist who has been exhibiting her work internationally. Her diverse experiences in the field of jewelry design cultivated her career in teaching as well. She has taught at the NYU Craft Media as an adjunct professor, as well as guest lectured or served as a workshop instructor at many schools worldwide. In 2017, she relocated her home to Tokyo, Japan, after having lived for 27 years in the USA. Recently, she established and opened a jewelry atelier in Tokyo. Welcome, Samuel and Sayumi. It's really wonderful to have you both here. Um, I feel so sad that I haven't seen you both in person in so long, even though, I mean, I used to see you on a pretty regular basis at Brooklyn Metalworks, a place that we all love and know. Um, but for our audience um, who may be joining us and sort of, you know, meeting you for the first time, can you tell us how did you two meet? We met through, I think it was at Berkeley Metalworks. Yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. I think I've known Samuel over something like 10 years. Is that right, Samuel? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because it was right around when they opened. Yeah, that's in right. Brooklyn. Yeah. Well, I I knew Sayumi um through he through her work first. Um and then we have many uh uh friends in common and and also um um you know, we are in the same uh community and eventually we 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 met in in one opening i think it was an opening at brooklyn metal works yes um so yeah i mean i finally put a face to to her work <laughs> i i'm i'm a, a big big fan of <laughs> thank you we've been good friends for a long time we we traveled together um we did many things in in the community together i really appreciate our friendship yeah, me too, so um so yeah I'm, I'm i'm very happy to participate in this conversation with you um because you are um a very important source of inspiration for my work and 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 a fantastic friend so um yeah so let's Thanks. should we start this <laughs> yes so um yeah are we ready bella is that okay we take I'm, off from here i'm turning it i'm turning it over to you thanks but we just want to Thank you again, Bella and NYC Jewelry Week for organizing this for us. And we're actually really excited too. And I heard that this is the last one for this season. So we're very thrilled. And um, 
Thanks for again um, for arranging the time, um, adjusting the time for me to join this because I'm actually 12 hours ahead from you. So um, it is seven, no, it's 8 a.m. in the morning on Friday. <laughs> so we're in the future. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in the future. <laughs> um, Tell us about Friday. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's sunny. Uh, I think temperature is starting to rise. I, you know, for the last few days, we've been experiencing over 90s weather. So it's been really hot. Mm, it, it's... But I can't wait for the summer. Bright and sunny day. I like waking up bright early. But it is kind of early for me. So I have my coffee. <laughs> And what do you have so well? Do you have your whiskey? Yay! It is time for whiskey. Cheers. Thank you. Time for whiskey. Um, I like that. Um, so, yeah, I think um, thanks for, you know, for this opportunity. Um, it gave me a chance to revisit your work. It's, it was really nice to sit down and take my time to look at your work again. And I felt like I, I'm, you know, so familiar with your work because I always saw you working in the studio and making things. And I saw your exhibition three times in the U.S. Right. Um, and um, some other group shows. And we always exchanged conversation over work. Um, we also participated in workshops, so I felt like I knew well enough, but actually I didn't. Um, so it was really nice opportunity to kind of rediscover wow. you and all the inspirations that feed into your work. Same, so same. yeah, yeah I was. It makes it different to talk about it, right? Like to right, it gave me. A uh, sort of different perspective, you know. Right. Um, and also, you know, I wanted to come up with questions, and I had to choose what to ask, right. which was kind of difficult. Because right. <laughs> right. I'm curious to know a lot of things. Cool. Yeah, you will ask questions, <laughs> and I will <laughs> ask questions too, because I'm also curious about your work. Okay. So yeah. I'm gonna introduce um, how we decided to do this conversation. Um, mm -hmm. So just to let people know how the dynamic of the conversation is gonna be. Um, so Sayumi and I decided to focus our conversation in our own process of us as makers. Uh, we like to call it the making of it. So in order to do that, we decided to center our exchange today in one object. Um, each of us choose one object from our body of works and we set a series of questions that might serve to understand the process of making them and why not even to question some of our decisions and results of the making. Um, so Sayumi, you want to start um, your questions? I'm going to put on screen the image of the piece that Sayumi chose? So um, I chose the, the neck piece. Uh, this was made in 2017, is that correct? In 2018. Yes. Um, I, well, it was difficult for me to choose one, but I chose this. Um, because I was so drawn to the materials that encased inside of those each component. And I've seen you incorporating same materials before this piece, but right. this was kind of different. Um, it was well structured and, and well, um, organized in a way that the, the porcupine, uh, I said that already, but porcupine needle is the inside, right? The quills. The quills, yeah. yeah. So it was, 
it was so intimately enclosed, like cased inside of those each components. So I felt really sacredness, sense of sacredness to this piece. Right. Um, and also I wanted to know more about the quills, porcupine quills, why you're so drawn to this material. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I'm curious to know why you decided to use porcupine quills. Right. I, well, uh, uh, I, the first time that I saw a, 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 a porcupine quill, I was like fascinated with with the with the nature thing that is, you know, that the um, that quill and and um, and the cons consistency of it, and and also the contrast between black and white. Um, so I had it like I bought it, and I had it on my bench, like you know, one of of those things that you buy, like you know, we we jewelers know and have a bunch of stones sitting there waiting, you know, for something to to for an idea to come up and do something with it. So um i had them um on my bench for 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 a while and then i was um designing for um um this group of, of pieces for for an exhibition that the theme was going to be brazil it was inspired by um brazilian modern architecture and um especially the the sidewalks um, which are like a, a very important visual element in, in, in some cities in Brazil. So um, I immediately thought of, it, of the porcupine because of the contrast between um, black and white. And um, so I just, you know, um, started to touch it, play with it, like caught it to see it was, if, if, if I was going to be able to work with it, because um, um, I didn't know how um, strong it would be. Um, and then, um, so the, the, the difficult part was especially uh, actually the, the setup of, 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 of this material because uh, it cannot be heated up. So, um, so I had to come up with a, 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 a an a specific setting so um, um, I could include it in 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 this piece. So I I, I think I recognize your meticulous work. I, I couldn't ignore that part as well while I'm was looking at your work. Um, I think me as a maker also my body recognizes it. The, the intensive labor behind the piece, but um, your work also sort of sculptural jewelry, can I call it? Yeah, I mean, you can Very sculptural, um, speaks a language of architecture a lot. You mentioned that architecture, um, but I feel like I, I, I can go inside of these each structure I can imagine this could be in a larger size. Right, yeah. An actual human size as a, you know, structure of, of building. And I was wondering if any of the, the urban environment where you live in now are really inspiring or, you know, is a great source of inspirations. Yeah, mine. definitely, definitely. I um for me um the the I mean all my my surrounded surroundings are um inspiration um um so I I I photograph pretty much anything. Um, luckily, we have now cameras in our cell phone. So I'm like, you know, photographing all the time. And right. this becomes my, my, you know, like I gather all these images and, and uh, make a constellation uh, with them. And then that that's pretty much my source of, uh, you know, that's how my, my, my process start with those. Images. Right. 
I remember your studio space was always filled with, you know, yeah. <laughs> pictures Things all the over on the on the wall. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 that. I mean, and also you understand better um, the work that I do when you see the images of that constellation, um, mm -hmm. because. It, it, it shows the, the projection that I try to make uh, out of those images and, 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 and you know, that, that final object, it's kind of, of that projection, yeah. So, yeah, definitely, the, it, it's architecture, it's, 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 it's Brazil, it's, you know, it's the experience of it. Right, and, um... It's uh, the, you studied photography also, right? I did, yeah, and, and yeah. ICP, yeah. So that kind of is, that is part of your process? Yeah, it's it's important part of my process, photography, yeah. Because I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm also trying to, to make another image because look, here we are discussing an image because I don't have the piece. Um, luckily, the piece is not with me anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But I have that image. So at the end of the day, we are producing another image. So yeah. Right. right. That's where we are. <laughs> so um, I also learned that you have experience in engineering. A little um, bit, yeah. Oh, okay. Back in, in uh, Venezuela. Yeah. Engineering. Yeah, I started studying engineering, but I I I quit. It was mm -hmm. too many numbers. Um, and actually, it was a a, a military um college. So um, I didn't like the system. So I end up um. Uh, going to accounting afterwards, so that's that's what I study accounting. Okay, that's a huge. And that that was a lot of numbers too. <laughs> but that helps. I I think that helps as a uh, being yeah. an artist. Yeah, I mean, I think whatever you do in your life will 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 help. You know. Right. Make you become whoever you want to be. I don't know. <laughs> That's true, yeah. um, but going back to the, the engineering part, you know, since your work is so mechanical um, in terms of, you know, the technique, but also the material or the way you handle the material um, and the way you execute the work, um, so industrial and mechanical. And I thought that any relations to your background experiences in engineering, how does yeah. it speak to you? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, um, I'm fascinated by, um, by architecture and engineering. And, and, and for me, um, the challenge of making a, a, a piece of jewelry, it's kind of like, um, an engineering problem because um, you know I, I like to play with the links and um, and um, and um, making like different clasps or or um, you know solve the problems like in this case of setting a piece with call connections and um, yeah definitely engineering is an important um yeah source for for my work and and i'm all i'm always like looking out there how how things are like you know how things are made and and how can i transform that or use that to make jewelry so right. yeah it is I'm, I'm 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 i mean in new york city it's like um the engineering geek city it's like you know they're building everywhere so um it is it is a good source of, of uh, inspiration to 
to live in New York City. I think I can relate to that part. I, yeah. I'm constantly looking out and I remember Subway in New York. I was like looking at each details of in a connecting part, like the hinges on the door or the pipes around the seat, <laughs> the yeah. way it's connected. Um, yeah, actually one time. Yeah, complicated. <laughs> Yeah, one time I was like struggling to make this clasp and I was like, I don't know what to do when I put the piece aside and I was like, let me think, let me think a little bit about it and nothing, nothing. And then um, one day I went out to uh, in the studio to, to our um, little patio and there were, there were a bunch of uh, like tubes and, and garbage out there. And I look at one of the tubes and I was like, oh my God, look how that is thick. <laughs> okay, I found, the answer's right there. Like, That's the clasp. So I went back to the bench and made the clasp. Yeah. This, I, I think living in the city or wherever you're living, uh, sources are out there and answers are out there, not sometime on your bench. Yeah. yeah like I have that similar experience. Like I, I hit the wall. And I have to just drop everything, stop everything, and I, I leave the bench, and all of a sudden I see the answer right. while I'm walking in the city or buying a piece of bread or something. Just you know, the illustration on the bag or just a little thing gives me a hint to complete the problems in the the work sometime right yeah, yeah. That's, that's the beauty of of uh, being a maker that you're sensible to 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 your surroundings and, and right. you use that uh as you know as inspiration yeah yeah Definitely. i have i we both have the antennas the, exactly right? the maker's <laughs> antennas yeah um, but I was, I couldn't, um, stop thinking about this whole, you know, experiences that you go through during the process. Um, but also the, the places, um, the time, all the pictures, like going through my mind while I was looking at your piece, um, all these meticulous work demands time right mm -hmm. including figuring out the mechanism um and you know what we do is so um isolated sometime solitary and um how you know how do you deal with that <laughs> and especially lately you know we stay home and and it wasn't new for me over this COVID situation, you know, for me to stay home working. Um, it was just a usual, you know, practice for me, but, you know, we, we weren't allowed to go outside. And so how do you kind of, how do you cultivate that new sort of habit? Right. Um... Like working alone uh it was difficult well for, I, I, my studio it's not in my house so it was kind of uh, i struggled because i i couldn't work during the pandemic but um once i came back to the studio it was like i mean um this situation made us appreciate more whatever we do or or you know our routines and in our commutes and like when I went to the studio for the first time I was like oh my god this is heaven it's like you know I was like oh so happy to go to a studio and then while being there it was like very exciting but I struggled a little bit to to get back to work um definitely um is there uh, anything particular like you do like a you know, as we say, rituals. <laughs> right. When you start uh, work. Well, I turn on the pickle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's that's um yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, and, and the torches. So I'm sure that I can solder something. Um, right. No, it all depends of uh, if I'm working on on one piece um, or not. If 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 um, if I'm designing, I, I first thing I I I have one of those foldable tables that come up and down. So you will see my table down when I'm like thinking and reading and designing. That's a sign of do not enter. Exactly. Do not disturb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but when I'm working, um, so yeah, pretty much I like something that I do is I, I like to leave um, whatever I'm working on on the bench. So when I get to the studio next day, I'm, I'm not distracted, you know, by something else. So I see the piece there and I'm like excited to, you know, jump on it. So um, yeah, that's one of my rituals. And if it's a small, um, if it's a small piece, I will mm -hmm. take it with me um, home, and I will like look at it at night and touch it, and um, and it, especially if it's a many elements piece, I I, I would do that because um, you bring it home. I bring it home. Bring it in a pocket and bring it home. Right. Yeah, I don't put it in my pocket like a friend of mine, like David, <laughs> which I love by the way that he does that. He puts the piece in his pocket and he's like in the subway and he touches right. it. And, but I, 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 I like like when he told me that I was like, oh, David, I do that too. I take it to my house and at night, I, like I, you know, see and because there is a a mood when you are out of the studio, maybe it's you you are less anxious to to solve that problem or you know you think better you I don't know it's it's a it's a helpful way to think. Yeah. Sometimes changing the environment or the space yeah. gives you a different yeah. angle. Exactly. To look at the piece. Yeah. 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 I have the similar habit too. Right. Hey, you tell us about it. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. So, um, but I have one more last okay. question to uh, move on um, before we move on. Um, uh, did you ever think about designing a house? <laughs> That's a challenge. The actual house? Um, no, uh, not a house, but like I enjoy, I can tell you that I, I enjoy very much um, moving to new studio spaces and Erin and, and Brian can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I like the idea of like setting up my my space in the most comfortable way, like thinking, you know, where am I gonna put the books, the tools, the, um, so so yeah, that um, and yeah, maybe I haven't thought of a house because in New New York City you don't think of uh, of a house. <laughs> Um, I mean, like how not not only a house, but it's like a structure, like architecture, uh, of okay. thing. Um, no, not really, not really. But that's um, that's interesting. I may start thinking about that now. Now that you tell me. <laughs> um, but definitely, when I make a, a a piece of jewelry, and I mean the scale, you see it, and you, if you think of it like in a bigger scale you can think of it like, you know, like it's a, a building or a sculpture or something. Um, but, but no, 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 not a specifically, you know, um, I, I always think when, when designing of, 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 of a jewelry of, of something to be wearable, um, I, I think of, 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 of the object as a as a wearable object yeah you have that thoughts when you start making or designing you you I, I, have a yeah. sense 
wearable, I, wearability. Yeah, I do. For example, with this piece, um, I mean, I think of it uh, as an object that is going to be exhibited and also as an object that is going to be wearable because it is important for me that you know, this piece is going to belong to someone. It's going to exist in someone else's body. So, uh, for example, with this necklace, I, the, the, the ir range of the contrast between black and white is thought on the neck. Like this part, it's going to be white and this part, this part is going to be black and it's going to, you know, that movement on the neck. So yeah, I think of, of the body. Cool. I just enjoyed seeing this piece because um, I also imagine myself going through like the space inside, outside. I tend to see the space around the jewelry when I look at the, the jewelry. Oh, cool. Imagining how it's worn on the body, but also me walking through, like, I like playing with the scale in my mind, in my imagination. Oh, that's cool, Sayumi. I... So, um, that's why I asked if you ever wanted to design a structure, right. architecture. Right. Yeah. I'm seeing it now, like, I, I've never do that. I, I, I'm imagining walking inside the, like, through the piece, like if it was a humongous thing. Yeah, it's I've a, had It's like that. a museum or, Yeah, you know, that's yeah. fine, yeah. Colin. Okay, I'm gonna start doing that exercise to see how it feels. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me switch to okay. my piece because I think we also share a lot of similarities I found um, I didn't really um, Ooh, think of you know my work looking um, at my work with your work together and I found um, I think we share uh, some similarities in you know the way we work during the process um but also what we see during the making what we think during the making inspirations right uh, yeah, you chose this piece yeah i did which is gorgeous um so um i'm gonna start asking a similar question that you did um can you describe any habit or repetitive gesture that you accomplished before or during the process that we might link to the idea of a ritual of making? I mean, what we, we're talking about, what's your, what's your repetitive gesture? Uh, in this piece, um, it's the, the, this, the loop. Right. Um, the repetitive pattern, which is the, the, like a doodles coils. Um, but I repeat that process also the repetition in the process as well. Um, so I use the same materials, same way, um, same form, same result, but what happened is each time I um, execute it, the, it, gave, it gives me a different result, even though I'm using the same materials, same process, same, you know, ways of making the loops. Oh. Um, I think each time my hands holds it differently or the force I apply gets stronger or lighter. Um, and just to, you know, depends on my mood also. Um, and that 
keeps me sort of in the same, you know, in the loop of this repetitive work. Um, so it seems repetitive, but it's not completely repetitive. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, right. So it, it looks like I'm doing the same thing over and over, but I mean, it, it is, but a I see a different thing. Yeah, it's a different um, pattern, it, you know, it's, it's, since it's, it, 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 every pattern is unique. Like I read a different, you know, loop in, 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 in all of them. Um, yeah. And, and what about the, the rituals that you have um, um, when, you know, to, in order to make, like, what is your, the, your your process um what are your own methods to 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 making um i'm, I'm interested to hear you talk about about your process um um, um i like, i have a you know i've been working with the uh, you know various sizes of uh, wires. I like the, you know, different gestures that I get from the wire, um, or wires. Um, and lately, I'm trying to, um, you know, create the tactility experiences in in the work. Uh, I'm trying to find the way to. Um, to put that quality in the work. So it's, it is something um, invisible. It's sort of, it's in my head. So I start with a bunch of uh, studies on my table. I have uh, little pieces of, you know, elements um, that I made, you know, by playing or touching or just this series of studies without thinking about, you know, what, what to make or what's it gonna be like. Right. Um, and so I repeat that process over and over and and I have, you know, the some deadlines that I have to finish work. So that gives me a little bit of, you know, telling me like, Sayumi, you gotta get on this, you gotta get on this. <laughs> and that helps me to choose, okay, you know, what to, um, what direction I want to go, or I decide my approaches. Um, so it takes, sometimes it takes a day, sometimes it takes a week or month. I, you know, fiddle around in my hands, um, but that, what, yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about the piece. Are you mean, what year is this piece? Um, it's, a, it's a brooch. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's about this big. Oh, okay. Um, and it's uh, it moves each component. Oh, it does. Beautiful. Yeah. Um. So it's it's consistent with four pieces of like a cone shape. And how is it linked? Like umbrella. How is it linked together? At the top of the cone. Uh huh. Um. They're they're um assembled. Each cone is assembled in the center of the piece right here okay and it's assembled with the piece of uh, a ring another loop uh-huh so it's flexible and so, so when it's on your body it moves as you move and it creates different space it creates different shadows um and I like the I like including the movement in my work. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah. Oh, that's that's good to know. And it and it, it changes the 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 idea of the piece because since you see all this um cone solder, all these wires soldered together, you would think that the piece is, you know, it it, it doesn't move. But it it it's it's a good surprise to know that it, it does move. Right. Um, so that's one thing, you know, it's difficult to send that um 
what do you call it? Like, um, you can't really touch unless I describe. Right. Um, right. So, or unless I take a video of the movement. Right, right. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so what aspect of the process did you enjoy the most? And what was the most difficult one that you struggled with in the making of this piece? Um, the, the most I enjoyed was the, the surprise that I got. Um, this was just a, not by accident, by um, sort of experimentation I was doing with the, the coiled um, pieces. Um, I was hammering, I was bending, I was forming, and I, I put it through the rolling mill and it just smushed everything to flat. Right. But I, I love the the outcome um, when I put it through the machine and it became super thin and super stretched to loops, uh, but the, each one is different and it didn't break. That was another sort of a right. last moment because, <laughs> um, you know, the coils are, the, the metals, the wires are overlapped and normally, if you keep hammering or hitting or pressed, that part gets really brittle and breaks. Right, right. But it right. didn't break. It kind of fused. Cool. So, um, yeah, I and then I, I had to like heat it up and formed and then gave a little bit of soldering to keep the shape in, in one piece. Um, but that was the the best or you know the the part that I enjoy the most the right. difficulty part was to decide what to do with them oh okay interesting <laughs> <laughs> um I, I I think I more focused during the process like how I like the the responses that I get from the materials through the process. Right. Um, so I don't have the final picture in my head when I'm making. Right. I, I sketches, I, I sketch, I make drawings or models as I play with the, the studies. So that was the difficult part. Uh, I, can't I kept playing and playing and right. It, it must be difficult to put a pin back to to that piece. I mean, it was kind of quite a challenge. Um, ah, you know, I forgot to mention um, two of the pieces, two of the cones are fixed. Okay. They don't move. So, yeah, I had to do that in order to put the brooch oh, mechanism okay. on the back. Right. Okay. So yeah, I figured that out as I had to finish. Right, right. Complete the piece, yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, so I have two more questions. Let me um, ask you this. I'm very curious. Um, can you address the differences between working in New York and working back in Tokyo? Um, I mean, how the context influences the process and even the very practical details, like um, where do you find the materials? Is there a jewelry district in Tokyo? I mean, how different um, do you feel in, in that sense in, in Tokyo than in New York? Um, very different. Um, you know, first language is different. Right. The way they call the tools, wow. the way they buy metals, the way they um, call techniques, methods. It, I had to learn from the the beginners uh -huh. level. Wow. Um, but it was it was interesting process. I was fascinated by discovering, you know, jewelry district um, in Tokyo. Um, 
and buying supplies and medals and people are very friendly and nice. So they, if I explain or if I question, they are very friendly to answer or help me. Like um, metalifers used to be, right? <laughs> what? Yeah, like metalifers. <laughs> they were super nice. <laughs> There is, a, there is actually a supply store like Metalliferous oh, in really? Tokyo. It's, oh. it's, I, I think it's the, the largest supply store. And so I, I go there or sometimes I even call them up and ask just the, you know, how to set the regulators, like the pressure point, because the regulators are different in Japan for the tank, regulators for the oxygens and regulators for the gas. So I call them up and they answer like, it's, it's really convenient. I ask everything. <laughs> um, oh, so- You have to take me to all these places when I go. I will, I will. Um, but it took me a while to get used to this and I'm still learning. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I became so comfortable working in New York. So um, everything is, new to me it was a bit of a challenging um but it was a good learning experience um so that sort of sometime gets limited to my working choices like you know environment or the choice of materials or what to make um because i i didn't know uh, particular things that I was looking for or I didn't know how to execute without the facilities or tools so that is part of the the making that became part of the making process also I had to kind of adjust myself to the environment um, um, so I started using paper uh, um, which you've seen um, I was collecting a um, bunch of envelopes with the, the patterns inside. You know, normally the window envelopes um, are plain white outside, but beautiful patterned inside, beautifully patterned inside. Um, so it, when I lived in New York, I started to collect because um, I'm so drawn to anything that are um, repetitive patterns right. in colors or right. non-colors. Um, and when I came to Japan, those, you know, window envelopes exist, but the patterns are completely different. Right. And I started to giving more attention to those that I discovered, um, depending on where they come from, associate different patterns. Right. Um, and they're in beautiful colors, bright colors. So I started collecting them and friends started to send me envelopes. So I have this like piles of envelopes and that gave me a whole another, you know, new body of work. And it's a perfect, it, it, it's a perfect transition from this artwork and, and the work that you're doing now. It's, um, you know. Yeah. It's um, it's a whole material, right? Gave me a different um, different way to approach my work. Right. Yeah, yeah. Finding myself, how to, you know, how to create work differently. Right. And um, my last question is um. Uh, the whereabouts of this piece? Does it exist? Was it exhibit, exhibited? And how important is it, it, it is for you the existence of an image within your work? Sorry, what was the last? Um, so the whereabouts of this piece? Um, it, it, it's in Germany right now. It's at um, Mikeko Gallery. Okay. Nick Germany. Um, this piece was made for a group exhibition. Um, we have been um, 
exhibiting and it's been traveling in Germany right now. Um, it's three persons show, Mari Minewaki, Mikiko, uh, Mari Ishikawa, Mikiko Minewaki and I, three of us organized a show called Invisible Thread. Absolutely. And um, Mikiko's mother is a Senryu poet. Senryu is a, a sort of a contemporary form of haiku, same form 575, but based, the, the idea is based on the contemporary times. So she writes pieces for us. Mm. Many, uh, uh, Senryu poetry for us and we choose each Senryu for each exhibition and we make pieces based on that poetry. Oh, gorgeous. That's beautiful. Um, so there's a story behind the piece and um, this was I created um, for the group exhibition. Besides the Senryu we also had to exhibit uh, body of work, recent work. And um, so this was um, sort of extension of my coil studies, right. which is made um, early this year. Beautiful, beautiful Sayumi. Thank you. Anyway, that was my last question. Um, we have, yeah, we have a question. We have several questions from the audience. Thank you both so much. That was incredibly interesting um, and inspirational. And thank you for giving, giving us insight into the process. So we have a question or multiple questions from Barbara Raleigh. Um, and she asks, where do you feel more creative? Um, she, there are language, material, tools, differences. What are you most comfortable creating or doesn't it make a difference as you can create or adjust your designs to the environment? Um, I don't know who, who wants to take that first, Sayumi or Samuel. You first, Sayumi. Where do I feel creative the most? Yeah, where do you feel more creative? Um, that's a difficult question. Um, I, I definitely, you know, what I do relies on the facilities in the physical space. Um, but it really, the place is inside, inner side. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is, is I, I feel more creative. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it could be very challenging at the same time. And in terms of, is it New York or Japan? Uh, uh, <laughs> <sighs> Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Yeah, I'm thinking about my New York City apartment. Um, <laughs> I, I'm adjusted to, not fully, but I'm adjusted to where I am now. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, living now so I, I think I'm starting to feel more creative mm -hmm. um it took me over three years um you know since I've been back it took me a while to adjust but I finally feel like I have my space yeah um so we are going to show a series of videos. And I was wondering before we show those videos, if you can both talk about what led to the creation of these videos as you are both working on a project. And it's also, I think a nice segue because um, especially for you, Samuel, the, the videos that we'll show are also linked to a place. So they're all sort of linked to different places. Right. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about the project that the videos were made for? Right, sure. Um, so um, we were asked to, to um, um, produce something for, for this blog, which is a, 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 an artist's profile blog. 
And um, so each artist will have a, has a, pay, have a page where they can like post anything related to their work. It can be videos, images, texts. So um, Sayumi and I started to talk about it and uh, exchange ideas. So I always wanted to show, since I work with uh, images, my inspirations, it's, it's this constellation of images. I wanted to, um, you know, give a people or, 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 or yeah, a, a, like project whatever inspires me and, and, and make people feel what I feel uh, mm -hmm. in order to make or, or, or to, to, to produce these objects that I produce. So it's, 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 I made each video with images of that constellation and um, the noises of, of the cities and, and, and whatever I relate to those images. And um, um, in the middle of those images, I put also um, images of, 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 of the result, which is the, the, the objects that I made, yeah. Um, okay, so I find these videos just to be so beautiful and moving and I hope you will all enjoy them as well. So there's a series of four short videos that I'll show first by Samuel and then I'll show um, two of Sayumi's videos. So just bear with me everyone as I share my screen. Um, okay, give me a second. Olha que coisa maneira do sol de Panem. Okay, so that was Brazil, and then now we'll show Spain. Give me a second. Oh. Incredible. Um, then I hope the noises of my own street don't interfere with the sounds of these videos. That's going to be part of my next video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this one is this one that I'm about to show is New York. So this is perfect. Um, Okay, and then one more. Um, okay, let's see. Awesome. Do you, uh, Samuel, do you want to say anything about those before I show Sayumi's videos? Uh, 
Um, well, that's that's pretty much my my inspiration, my my everything, my work. Um, it's the the evolution of my work till till what I'm doing now, which is um in Ameline and and the color in in the work. It's it's it, you know it it evolved to that, and that's what I'm making now. Yeah, colors. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, we have some comments from the audience about just the the sound and the visuals. And um, Laura Lynn says, "Now I want to dance with jewelry on." Um, <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. Okay, so now we'll show Sayumi's videos. Um, just give me a second. Uh, oh no. Okay. Well. Um, Sorry, just give me a second. I pulling it up. Apologies for that. Uh, okay. All right, give me a second to share my screen. Oh, give me a second. Sorry. Okay. Gorgeous. Beautiful. So poetic. And yeah. then last but not least, okay, give me a second. Um, sorry, okay, just give me a quick second. Ah. Okay, beautiful. What I love about those videos is that they perfectly encapsulate who you both are as individuals and as artists. And they're both so, I mean, they're just so lovely to watch and you get lost in the videos in the same way that you get lost in your work. So thank you so much for sharing those with us today. Um, so yeah, we are getting more comments on, um, and the videos and how everybody loves them. Um, so thank you both so very much for being here. You know, what I loved about this conversation and about you two together is, you know, how insightful and how thoughtful you both are about your process. And that is absolutely evident in the work that you create. So thank you so much uh, for sharing that with us today, because that process is it's quite, it's quite intimate, you know? And so thank you both for being here and for sharing your stories and for sharing, um, for partaking in this conversation. Um, you know, it's, it's a great way, I think, to close out the season of Jewelry Confidants for us. So thank you both so much for being here. Um, we will be posting this conversation to our YouTube channel uh, next week and we will share the link. Um, so I hope you share this conversation with your friends. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Samuel's and Sayumi's work, um, you can go to their Instagram pages, which we've put um, in the chat. Um, we've put their Instagram handles, um, but also their websites. Um, thank you all so very much, Sayumi. 
uh, enjoy your Friday. <laughs> um, and have a enjoy your Thursday evening. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vela, and, and New York City Jewelry Week. It, it was a, a fantastic, fantastic experience to share our process. Yeah. Thank you.